Hello and welcome to the first in the A-level series of lessons from the conscientious biologist Ben Gallagher. Now this one's Cell Biology 1, it's an introduction but this is really essential GCSE recap. I see this all the time with A-level students, especially students who come to me to ask for extra tutoring. It's not that they're not working hard at A-level, it's that their GCSE foundations are weak and they're trying to build on top of those but without really the depth of knowledge to understand the new concepts that are coming to them. So please don't skip this one through. It's quite a quick one, but we're just going to recap everything that I expect you to know to be able to access the A-level standard of cell biology material. As always, I will always ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook for extra bits of biology to help round out your knowledge. Thank you. So as I said, we're looking at the really important stuff from GCSE. This is the stuff that you just can't neglect or you won't understand it. So biology is pretty much all about cells. All living things are made of cells, so almost everything we study in biology comes back to a cellular level. So let's look first at cell theory. Now you may have talked about this at GCSE, but you probably didn't specifically revise it. But this is a basis for lots of biology, and it's that all living things are composed of cells. There's nothing living that isn't made of cells. That the cell is the most basic unit of life, that once you split a cell open and start looking at the things inside it, they can no longer be classed as living, and lastly, that all cells come from pre-existing cells. Now, we know way, way, way back in evolution, there must have been an original proto-cell uh, that would have formed spontaneously by the chemical, biochemical behaviour of lipids and things like that. But now, really, all cells just come from pre-existing cells. Even consider yourself. It was a sperm cell and an egg cell that fused together to make a zygote. Every single cell in you then just arose from that original zygote and they're being continually replenished and replaced now. So all cells come from pre-existing cells. So that's at the heart of what we need to study in biology. So if you did follow my GCSE lessons, you might remember there were five big questions in biology. There's my own breakdown of how biology works. And if you can answer these, not much of biology isn't accessible to you. So first off, what are cells? Okay, we address that in several lessons at GCSE, but hand in hand with that, it's what do they do? Or in other words, what is life? If we're talking about a cell being a living entity, what's the definition of life? And annoyingly, there isn't really a definite definition as to what constitutes life. What we say in biology is that it classes as life if it is a cell, like we put in cell theory, and if that cell has a metabolism, which means lots of chemical reactions that cells sustain each other to allow the cell to keep perpetuating reactions so it can just keep going. OK, so that's life. Uh, and cells need to do all of the reactions to keep that going. So things like protein synthesis, mitosis, respiration, photosynthesis, all that stuff. So what do they need? in order to do those processes to maintain life. So that's a much bigger question. So what do they need? We're talking about nutrients, that they need glucose, amino acids, lipids, all those kind of things. And you've got to be able to explain the reasons for those. How do they get what they need? That's more looking at physiology. But if you looked right at a cell basis, how do they get it? By diffusion, by active transport, by osmosis. But in a multicellular organism, we're talking about by breathing to get the oxygen, by eating to get those nutrients, many, many ways. And then how, how do they, if you're going to eat, how do you get that food? So we're linking up towards evolution of predators. We're talking about ecology and the environment that they set in. So there's lots of stuff, which kind of takes us into the next question. of What's the result of that? If you've got these cells, the cells do stuff. So they need stuff to be able to do that stuff. How do they get that stuff? Well, how has that then rolled on over millions of years to create the complex biological world around us? If you can answer all those questions in detail, and please do go back to my GCSE les lessons. Um, there's one kind of in the middle of the course, I think it's about lesson 28, that answers those five, or certainly the first four of those five, in quite a lot of detail. So go back to that if you're not sure. But please, Go and have a look. Here's the cell biology playlist. I think there's about nine less or seven videos it says on there, seven videos in that basic cell biology playlist. And definitely go back and watch the one on proteins one in introduction because that's a major basis for all biology. So go back and have a look at those, but let's move on to looking at cells themselves.
So this is question one and two from those big five. What are cells uh, and what do they need to do? So we'll keep it very, very simple. Cells are just very small compartments that can make specific proteins which do everything the cells need. I say this so many times throughout GCSE that proteins do pretty much everything for a cell to maintain its metabolism and stay alive. So in order to make proteins, we need some very specific things. Well, first, you need the two things that make you a compartment for a cell. You need the cell membrane and inside the cell membrane, you're going to have the cytoplasm that creates space in a 3D environment for all of the chemicals to float around, bounce into each other and react. So these two things, the membrane and the cytoplasm, create a compartment which allows everything to interact. Now, if you're gonna make proteins, you need two other things. You need the instructions for how to make those proteins. So I'm hoping you recognize these little, these little lines. These are chromosomes, but chromosome is made of DNA. So when I label them, I like to label them as chromosomes of DNA, because DNA is the chemical they're made of, and they're the instructions for how to make proteins. But there must be something in the cell that can read those instructions. And those are these little guys. These are ribosomes. So ribosomes can follow genetic information indirectly, if you remember back to GCSE de detail, because they use a messenger molecule. But basically, the ribosomes can understand genetic material, build the proteins. Once the proteins are made, they'll keep everything working in the cell because they're like the little robots that run the cell. And as I've already said, and I say it so many times, proteins do everything. So switching up a bit now, it's still GCSE level, but it's still recap to a slightly higher level. If we're looking at a basic eukaryotic animal cell, and if the term eukaryotic kind of rings a bell to you, but you can't remember what it is, it's part of classification. So if you remember classification, we break all life down into domains and kingdoms. You break them down further below that until you eventually get down to genus and species, which you may remember is as a binomial. So for us, our genus, homo, species, sapien, we are homo sapiens, that's our bi binomial. Um, but in terms of life on the planet in different types of cells, you've got three domains up here. Now we used to just say you had eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Relatively recently, prokaryotes got broken down into two distinct groups, which are quite different to each other. That's the eubacteria, which are more like traditional bacteria, ordinary bacteria, and archaeans, which are a far more ancient form. Uh, and they're quite specialists. They like living in extreme environments, but they're quite different. For most purposes, we just talk about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Okay, but prokaryotes is U bacteria and archaea. So eukaryotes, you would already know, hopefully in detail, what an animal cell and a plant cell looks like. Hopefully you'll remember that the other two eukaryotic groups are fungi and protista. Okay, let's just get rid of that. Um, although if you did want to refresh your knowledge of that, it's this video from my GCSE course. It's Evolution 6 Classifications. Go and have a look for it if you need to. But if we look at a basic animal cell as a eukaryotic example, um, almost all eukaryotic cells are essentially the same. They have a few differences about them, but we'll use animals and plants to demonstrate that. So let's put on the bits we know. We know it's got a cytoplasm. We know it's got a cell membrane. That's what makes it a compartment. We know it's got the chromosomes of DNA and the ribosomes, and I've put in green the reasons for those. But let's add the extras. In eukaryotic cells, to protect that DNA, you have a nucleus. Now, this is just another layer of membrane wrapped around the DNA to keep it safe, to keep it protected. Because if that DNA gets damaged or lost, then you lose the instructions to build the proteins and the proteins won't be able to do their jobs. So it's really important. So eukaryotic cells have locked it up in this nucleus uh, to hold and to protect the DNA. You've also got in animal cells loads of these structures, which hopefully you recognize as mitochondria. Now we'll look at those structures and all those internal little wiggles in much more detail in the next video on cell ultrastructure, which is purely A-level material. But mitochondria, remember, are the site of aerobic respiration. You can then have an animal cell small temporary vacuoles. Hopefully that hasn't confused any of you seeing that and you go, what, no, animal cells don't have a vacuole. Yes, they do. They're different to plant cells though, because animal cells have small temporary ones. Plant cells have one that's permanently there and they're generally very large. But vacuoles are always used for storage. So this is an animal cell. Now, if we're gonna change this into a plant cell, and actually take a screenshot of that if you need to, just as a, as a key bit of information on what an animal cell looks like at GCSE level, okay? 
But if we're now going to change this up to a plant cell, I'm going to get rid of a few points here. I'm going to get rid of the membrane. I'm going to get rid of the small temporary vacuole. And then for a plant cell, the most obvious thing about it is its shape. It's shape that's caused by this big cellulose cell wall. My cellulose uh, long polysaccharide chains, they're made of a, of a type of sugar, a type of glucose. They form these long chains that form a, a sort of locked together mesh that forms the cellulose cell wall. The membrane of a plant cell is then pressed tightly up against the inside. You can see it as the blue line here. It's pressed up because the plant cell can take water in, expand its membrane, press it against the sides. But the major role of the cellulose cell wall is to prevent the plant cell from bursting by osmotic pressure, but it allows pressure to build up, which makes the plant cell a nice solid block, which the plant can use as a structural building block. So they will keep a, a plant's structure. We have a skeleton, so we don't need our cells to become all rigid like that. And the word for that you might remember is turgid. Let's add the other things here to a plant cell, though. The obvious thing, uh, as we've said, is that they have a large permanent vacuole for storage. But they also have these big things, chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are where photosynthesis occurs. Now, we've mentioned photosynthesis there. We've mentioned respiration. They're explained in good GCSE detail in other ones of my videos. Go back to check those if you need to, because when we look at photosynthesis and respiration at A-level detail, it's a lot more detail. So make sure your foundations uh, in those are strong. Uh, take a screenshot of this if you need to as well. That's a plant cell. Just for contrast, let's throw up here a prokaryotic cell, just so you've got it there for scale, so you can see roughly how they correlate to each other. Because prokaryotic cells are much, much smaller than eukaryotic cells. They're 10 to 100 times smaller than eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are 10 to 100 times bigger. OK, take a screenshot of this one if you like, but that's pretty much it for the detail that I would expect you to know from GCSE. So very quick summary then to take away. A cell is the smallest unit of life. Once you break it open, you destroy metabolism. Therefore, it's no longer living. They're living if they can perform metabolism and that's carried out by proteins. Proteins are like little machines and structures that do everything in the cell. If you're not sure about proteins or you're thinking, oh, we didn't do much on proteins at GCSE, please go back and watch my GCSE le lessons uh, on proteins because it's such an important thing. Um, as long as the cell can make all its different proteins, they'll carry out everything necessary to keep the cell alive and functioning. Cells must have a membrane and cytoplasm um, so that everything inside them can move around. They need genetic material, which is almost always DNA, but not in every single case. They then need ribosomes to read the ge genetic material so that they can make the proteins. There's two main types of cells. Those are prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, of course, really are broken into eubacteria and archaeans. And then cells can have many additional features to help them perform more effectively, like in all the pictures that I've got here. You do need to know all those different parts and the roles that they play. But everything here is just basic GCSE knowledge that you must have secure if you're going to move on effectively to A level. So have a revise through this, go back and watch any that you really think you're missing from GCSE and please be conscientious about it. Don't just go, oh, well, I might, well, I might not bother, I'll see how I get on. Conscientiousness is about making things happen for yourself and putting in the hard work to make sure you get good success. So please do go back and revisit those. So from here, we'll jump straight into the more complex A-level stuff. Head to this video lesson, which is cell ultrastructure. This is a detailed look at cell organelles. Lots and lots of stuff to learn in this, but it's very, very straightforward stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Please do subscribe to my channel. You should be able to click on the little circle of my face above me. And do have a look at my Facebook and Instagram pages if you're on those for lots of additional content and information. Good luck. Thank you.